Hello and welcome to season 5 episode 10 of the Voiro podcast with me as always Kavita Shanoi founder and CEO Voiro Kavita What's up It's almost the end of the year man it's almost the end of the year It's probably the best Fridays of the year are the ones close to Christmas It's true it is true and this has been one roller coaster of a year and uh we thought that today we'll go over the best of the year uh what we're looking forward to next year and you know anything in between as well so i'm i'm entering this friday first of all after a night of poker where i got wiped out on the last hand <laughs> near wiped out so it's quite tragic and two i have finally brought this great mic back to the office it has been in my house for a few months well, yeah, traveled been- with me to south africa and i was telling santosh i did it only for him and i thought about santosh the entire flight santosh has anybody thought Southern of you like this huh? because it has didn't fit anybody thought of you like it this didn't fit in my luggage and so i had to carry it in a little bag <laughs> the entire time santosh is not even his wife <laughs> <laughs> and on this the way there two Niju boys was, and a was, podcast mic yeah on the way there niju was with me so i made him carry it on the way back i had to carry so everywhere as like santosh 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 not it yes before we dive into the uh, the little retrospective you want to do on this year uh what are you watching i just finished watching the uh christmas special or christmas episode of virgin river i know that's a very uh, it's a very controversial uh get disclosure but it is a really nice show i mean i liked it i think it's like it's it's super random and it's it's easy to watch and it's got great views and I want to go live in Virgin River but I watched that and they this time they've broken it up they broke it up right they had they they dropped an entire season and then they had this Christmas special ah, okay. that came out later and I see that happening with a lot of other series as well to keep people hooked and to keep them also to have like something to be some kind of a breadcrumb for the next yes. season and so that it doesn't just drop off right So it's uh, and they keep it context- contextual. So I'm sure they're going to do it next year a lot more. I remember a lot of shows did this during COVID, where they would get the stars together on a Zoom call and do oh, like oh yeah a, yeah yeah little yeah. like fake episode. Correct. Or some they did uh, they did uh, Father of the Bride. They oh did yes, a, they did yes. A Zoom call edition. Oh man, that was serious nostalgia. COVID yeah. just made everybody stop and pause and think of the glory days. Yeah. And bring everybody back. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I am watching Full Swing. Oh, on Netflix. What is that? Please don't tell me it's something about swingers. No, no, no. <laughs> swingers are a different type. Uh no, so it's um like Drive to Survive. Right. It's about F1. Full Swing is about golf. Golf. And but don't they play the with PGA Tour. But don't they play with other uh, uh sportsmen? Like don't they play with no, no, fun no. guys? No, no, no. That's a different series. I okay. forget what it's called. Yes, but that's also another one. Yeah. But Full Swing is ex- the exact model of Drive to Survive. They go behind the scenes all the drama who travels with whom who's the guy who travels only with his family and makes things awkward for everybody else oh no who's like who's the player yeah <laughs> who's throwing their clubs in the locker room it's great and this was the year of live golf the upstart league and so they have oh this is a fun show nice so so now netflix has drive to survive they have the this up with the tennis one yeah right? it's uh, game point game point i think it was called and they now, have one about the tour de france yes and now uh, now the the golf one golf one full swing Nice. Right, so this is their this is their Yeah, but none act- of them have done as well as Drive to Survive. Yes. The Numbers show. The Numbers show. Yes. We'll come come yeah. to that a little later. But what were the best things of the year for you? Okay. So let's talk about the industry first. Um for me from the industry two things stuck out to me this year. One is I'm really liking where retail media is going. Um both as a consumer as well as industry watchers. Right. um there was an article in the impression uh, the newsletter that we subscribed to a couple of weeks ago which talked about the end of the duopoly in india which of course we've been hearing for a while but in there they talked about the fact that uh, bottom of the funnel retail media commerce advertising is starting to attract dollars faster than before and they published some numbers they published flipkart's numbers amazon's numbers uh, nike's numbers and definitely a marked shift from earlier years so much so that i have a neighbor sharat who listens to our podcast who works for amazon who came and knocked on my door and he said flipkart will do 3500 crore because <laughs> people in my office are like talking about it now and in the beginning i was like is there a confidence then i was like hey hang on this is the news yes i was like yeah go, go look at it but 
definitely ruffling some feathers yeah um but i feel like even as a consumer like i'm not starting to see ads and enjoy them as part of my retail experience i'm actually looking for products now and scrolling down and seeing what the other sponsored listings are so my relationship with ads is now sort of taking a turn because i've always talked about how i hate ads i went to south africa they've gotten you and they've gotten you and they have trained you and now you, there is no point of return for that's you. it that's, that's it. it but that's one it. is that and two is on a very personal front connect to tv is it connect to tv <laughs> yes of course yeah what about you so i was telling you before for us i think both of us what we've spoken about a lot and we've really enjoyed talking about this and that's pretty much the highlight of why we do this podcast and how we jam about it has been <clears throat> of course the succession finale uh, that has been that has like that has literally underscored the entire year because it kind of gave us a a flavor of what's to come actually in the boardrooms of the media moguls that we know today between bob iger or the ambanis or what's happening at star and punit koenka and wherever else right so i feel My like goodness, yeah. yeah it's all over the place and it almost was like it was a precursor to what's to come uh and everybody has their it's all a, it's like there are family sagas there are corporate sagas everything around the media and that's so i think that really delivered you yeah, know i i something about shows just so magic is like an echo chamber because yes. we watched it yes. we listened to the podcast then yes. we talked about it yeah. and now i hear that you're watching it again i'm watching it again and i am giggling over every part of it because when you watch cousin greg in season 1 episode 1 who says like you know it's okay i i can be called craig i keep thinking about what's going to happen in the in the episodes that's to come and i'm like man this is this is real character build up right uh it's it's genuinely um it's it's a great watch all over again then of course union dramas i was telling my um you know malayalis are famous uh famously mostly communist right and they mostly are in unions so my brother in law and his wife and everybody they've moved to the us like 25 years ago and they have a son Karan who is uh, was a writer in Hollywood and before i knew it he was in this union and he was striking and i'm like man you can take a malayali out of india <laughs> right you can never you not you can get like, a second yeah, generation yeah, version yeah a second them. generation version of him but you will never not be a part of a union right so but yeah i mean it was it, it was a very different take on you know how a union can help you and it was highly storied uh, i think we had a lot of learning from it from the Uh, union drama i don't know what did you think about like when you reflect back on the chaos and the uncertainty and you know the surprise and the length of the 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 union drama like what did you think um i uh, uh, spent a lot of time just poo pooing it yeah, yeah it's got to go away if this is, happens every few years and they'll sort it out in the next couple of weeks and then it took months yeah and then our show started to get affected and then i started to miss late night like comedy yeah And then we got into the details and decided we would talk about it and we came back and did so it's been a cool journey but i i think given where we are in the ai revolution this is a going to one day be looked back as a very historic stuff yeah. for sure and the lesson that i also learned is that while a lot of people who understand how it affects the end consumer uh from their position the end consumer doesn't really understand what they what power they have right until it actually gets transferred and it takes time uh so i think more power to these kind of unions to open this up yeah what i love about it is it struck home a little bit because the reason we started this company was because we were very intrigued by the relationship between content and money yeah uh and this for me was a straight yeah. dagger into 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 that very concept so and, i thought it came nice and where the power lies yeah <clears throat> but you know generally when you look at it right now from a trajectory perspective content is still really really expensive to make to create and it's becoming more and more expensive so something is going to have to give and i'm i'm like i'm wondering what's going to kind of give next year um then the other one were the merger sagas right it's a little bit more on the succession side but you know what's happening with w, what happened with wbd we started off with david zaslov coming in and like cutting everything down and taking things off the floors to doing a whole bunch of other things that we thought was uh, was odd um him and then over here in india with uh, z and sony um not it's yet, been uh, not yet done not yet done yeah and it's all like still up in the air but it's still it's still it's still very much out there in the open um and while we all talk about consolidation 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 like we were talking about it earlier we didn't know what the impact of consolidation is going to be 
So people are losing jobs. Um, you know, there are there are there is confusion in the market as to how to buy. And there's a finite amount of advertising money if you look at it, especially in India, right? It's not really growing from a, it's growing like thirteen, fifteen percent, etc. But it's not like it's it's everybody's going after the same pie. Yeah. So there is a lot, just like the unions are kind of that uncovered and peeled open. I think even this mer these mergers will will also be a big eye opener as to how the industry operates as well and what all gets affected. What do you think about the mergers? Um. Social media has shown us that no matter how many people come and go, industries that have a huge barrier to entry of some form, either it's distribution or scale or money, will eventually consolidate and there will be a handful. I'm wondering if we're going in that direction. Because for a while, maybe three, four years ago, even in like our conversations, we just kept talking about choice. Mm. But I think companies like Reliance are having the last laugh because mm. they have the coffers to do this. So I am trying to think about where this is going to go because much like social media if eventually we are going to land in maybe two or three key players a fund foundational ai is moving in that direction social media is moving in that direction it appears that new age media is also moving in that same direction i'm wondering if that consolidation of choice is good or bad for consumers um because if i think about music for example it's the same but i don't feel shackled I actually feel like it gives me everything. I'm never, I can never, I don't need more than 10 seconds to like think, have a earworm in my head and like listen to it. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter which platform, they're all the same. We, every time we listen to a podcast, what do they say? They're like, you know, subscribe to us everywhere. Right? So it's become very easy to just publish everywhere. Somewhere along the way, that needs to be solved. The ability to publish content Everywhere, so people can consume it. The ability for consumers to not have to worry about yeah. a subscription mess. And of course, the ability to then compute the distribution of money so that it is fair and equitable uh, to content creators so that the industry thrives. So I'm more curious about where this is going. This was bound to happen. Like You've talked about it for years. You've talked about consolidation and conver convergence for, for a few years now. That convergence curtain is not yet dropped know whether it will you know I think something will die and something will take its place this whole convergence is just too much of a romantic notion like both people both parties will win etc somebody's going to kill the other person somebody's going to eat the other industry I don't think convergence necessarily will happen consolidation for sure because I was a big proponent of convergence I thought like oh my god it'll converge we'll sell TV digital together not realizing that the common denominator is not going to change drastically right uh, and also audiences are pretty much the same so, and the other last thing that I think was the highlight of our year was the boom of Gen AI and the, the you know, the the waves it created. Also some boardroom drama. Yeah, the boardroom drama there as well. Uh, that was, uh, I, still, I still can't wrap my mind around that. You give somebody $13 billion and don't ask them why and how or anything. You have no board seat, you have no board observer seat. You're just like, take my money, do whatever Artists. you want. MBA case that is power, Anand. Out. That is power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I think I think these were from an industry perspective. Collectively, we thought this was like fun. I don't know, Lida. Did you have anything? Last was that yeah. Yeah, the Gen AI thing. Yeah. 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 What did you think about um, the podcasts that we dropped this year? Are there any particular ones that any particular favorites? You know what I really enjoyed. Uh, and what I saw as a stat also Santosh had published about the podcast doing well is that we do really well on YouTube. And people actually watch us on YouTube, which is really fun. And I've gone and I went back to the YouTube videos and I watched them. And we it's fun. <laughs> it's great because, you know, from my perspective, it's almost like canning memories, right? Because we are like canning moments in time, talking about stuff that today is no longer relevant to us. Because see, like, for example, the whole unionization and the I mean the whole union drama and everything else was so top of mind at one point in time it's no longer relevant because it's done and dusted yeah but to be able to look back and laugh about whatever we were talking about at that point in time or really relate to everything else is really fun so if you're listening to this podcast and you want to see something more and see how we look or how it's recorded yeah. uh, you can go to the YouTube uh, I think channel. it's our thumbnails is that and, yeah. uh, <laughs> the funny words that make no sense uh, oh but my God, apparently create a lot of intrigue yeah yeah the, the, the closed captions are ridiculous because we have 
like very heavy Indian accents, and so a lot of like lot of words. Speak for yourself. Been, yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I have a very very uh, heavy Indian accent, but uh, like some of the words that I said, I'm not saying that. And then you know, <laughs> I switch it on. I'm like, oh my god, I really have to work on my pronunciations. <laughs> um, Nikhil Kamath has a really nice podcast. Yeah, called... he placed in this podcast uh, race as well, right? Of, he did. Yeah, yeah. He got mentioned. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you. Why? <laughs> Top achieving. But it is a nice podcast, yeah. and he had um, he had on a few influencers recently, where he was talking about uh, what it means to create influence. And so he asked this question to Tanmay Bhatt and Nas, uh, guy everyone's Nas Daily Nusair, mm. and he said, "Are thumbnails important?" And simultaneously, Tanmay Bhatt says, "Extremely important," and Nas said, "Not important at all." Oh no! At the same time, so Nikhil just sat back. He's like. Have at it, guys. Have at it. So who won? No, so Tanmay Bhatt was talking about thumbnails in the YouTube sense, and Nas was talking about if you're trying to make it as an influencer today, forget long long form, go TikTok, go like short form, go YouTube Shorts. Over there, it's like you have seven seconds. If focus on that, like forget, you don't need to worry about thumbnails. But it was interesting that they had two opposing opinions. Uh, one of the other things that I read today, which I do not know where I read it now, and I'm pretty sure I'll put it in the show notes and give it credit, but uh, I read somewhere about the the normalization of backgrounds in social media. So with YouTube, it was your bedrooms because you would record from your table and whatever else. Uh, Instagram, it was uh, I don't know where it was. Jesus. Okay, and then TikTok, it's from your car. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So I think YouTube was homes, uh, Instagram was bedrooms, and uh, uh, TikToks. Uh, people make their talks, by the way. As you know, I'm very upset that India does not have TikTok, and I really wanted to have TikTok. But anyway, so uh, they record from their cars. So th- there is there, there there are so many cultural trends that 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 are underlying that kind of come out after several years when you look back at it. Uh, which is also why I like to look back at our YouTube videos. Not like we are creating a trend or anything, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> My favorite favorites from our podcast, first of all, was our 50th episode celebration. Oh yeah, but we got a little smash. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, on camera. On camera. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Santosh for topping up my drink. Like, yes, multiple generously. Times, multiple <laughs> times. Um, but I also liked two other episodes specifically. The one where we broke down. Sag after and yeah. residuals. It was also new learning for us because we made a commitment to episodes before that that we would study. Yes, you would study everything and, and listen to everything that's we did. out there. And two is, of course, uh, uh, the one we did at the top of the year with Krishna Rao. Oh, that was OTT fantastic. Verse. It was like a, felt like a student again. He just sit back and he was telling us how things work. And, and he's not he away so, with Yes, he's so, well, yeah. really away with words and, and everything is kind of like still stuck with me because I've really sort of absorbed everything he said. Yeah. That was fantastic. And if you guys uh, are listening, go read up OTTverse.com because that's where all the all the things on OTT are being published. Okay. okay. Let us talk about 2024. At an industry level, what are you most looking forward to? This is controversial. I'm looking I forward to... I love it already. <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, how AI is going to be changing the media industry. Because I firmly believe that human creativity has a big place, especially today in Gen AI. And I and I know this because I tried it firsthand and I know I suck at it. I mean, you know, I remember you saw that presentation I sent out. I did. I zoomed in <laughs> to those photos and I knew what you had done. Yes. <laughs> so I was trying to get pictures to support this presentation. And by the way, I loved it. Cause yeah. That- yeah, you know, I've been on that trip for like a few months. Now. And it is, yeah, I, I took a leaf out of your book, right? So I was like, you know, I can do this. So I went to stability.ai, I went to dreams and I, and I started keying in. I realized that you really need to understand what you want and then be able to express it with extreme levels of specificity. You can't just be generic. And I've, I'm genuinely very generic. I'm just like, at some point in, point in time, I go into like, grunts and, and sounds. So I was finding it so tough to sit down and like write. And, I had a prompt. And the thing is that you get a free version of it, which is only 25. Okay. And every time you, you say something and it gives it back to you, you're like, oh, is that what I said? Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what I said. And it looks rubbish, right? 
and so it, it there was a lot of like pressure and tension because I didn't want to lose the twenty five in experimenting, and I wanted to get something out of it. But I really believe this this version of Gen AI maybe for the next two three years has a deep correlation with human creativity. You have to know how to prompt, what to ask for. You have to have human imagination. You have to have that. Otherwise, your AI is not going to be able to think of a new idea. So I think people who are like really worried about AI is going to take over my job and I'm going to be replaced. Sure, maybe in the future that could be the case, but maybe that job is not really going to be a, the greatest thing. You'll find something else better. But for the next two, three years, you definitely have a equal, if not bigger part to play. So I feel like next two, three years will be like a hybrid workplace for us. We'll have like AI plus, plus human workforce and uh, we'll be investing a lot in tech with AI. So that's exciting. No, it is. It is. Uh... I initially looked at AI tools and thought that, oh man, this is going to really like crash yeah. the time. Because when I make uh, PowerPoints or decks, or slide decks, I usually do it at night. I usually do it with a movie playing on a second screen because I just, I don't know, that's just how I've always done it. And so it will take me like six hours to do it. Yeah. Okay. And I'll finish up at three in the morning and feel like really chuffed myself. And then I was really happy because I said this six hours is going to just crash to like an hour max, right? And then I spent five hours playing around with these table diffusion models, trying to get the prompt right. In the middle, I ran out of things. I put a credit card, I paid. Just I've done it. I've copied other people's prompts and tried to like oh, mess man. with it. You and me both. But yeah. I, 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 I was like, this is not. This is not going to be magic. And while the narrative around AI is almost it's magical, it isn't. Um, also, today's news, which I read in the Signal, was that um, OpenAI has signed up with publications like Axel Springer and stuff to make sure that they are aggregating their news. Earlier, they were just crawling them without permission. I think they are trying to avoid legal. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, because it's like we've just all been given a new toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. For yeah. sure. And at one point, I was like screaming at the laptop. It was like <laughs> one in the morning and... Like, Varsha I didn't came ask out you this. from the room and she said, what's going on? I was just like, AI, AI, <laughs> just let me be. He's like, yeah, because, you know, I, I was like, I did not say this. And I'm like, oh, I actually did say this. So it is, um, it is very literal. And so, uh, like I said, specificity, the ability to create prompts, ability to understand language, uh, being creative and, and, uh, and, you know, making sure that your adjectives are far more defined, which I think that, you know, chat GPT will probably help you with, say, you know, if I want something say it better, it probably will be able to give me a better version of saying the same thing. The other thing I think AI will actually give us, and then it'll be bad for us, initially it'll be fantastic, and then it'll be like, what is going on? Is where we are today with our children is the paradox of choice. Because when you start collaborating human beings with AI, one idea can be turned into 15. Like we tried to search for a feature name, if you remember, and it came up with like 25 every time we gave it one. And so it's going to create that same circle of chaos. Like today, there are so many things you can do to make a living. What are you doing with it? Some people are just like paralyzed because there, there are so many choices. But I think initially it'll be great because we'll have a lot more choices. In the long run, I feel that kind of blow back in our faces. What do you think? You're looking, you're again looking like you have something interesting to say. No, no, no. <laughs> I agree. I'm also excited to see how it plays out, but it's definitely going to have a huge bearing on our industry. Yeah. Um, this year alone, I think we'll leapfrog. No, I don't know if that will stabilize or we will leapfrog, leapfrog, leapfrog again. Sure we will. Before. I've seen some incredible videos that have been created on Mid Journey Plus. Videos, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Midjourney is not AI, not video, but there's another uh, platform that creates video as well, which I forget now. But it's it's incredible the kind of creativity that's being unleashed on the internet, and uh, they're making it. They're making they're making they're reimagining brand videos for shoes and and stuff like that. So it's 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 beautiful. Um, so I'm 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 really looking forward to the the nice part of AI. I'm pretty sure that we'll be inundated with the junk as well, which is fine. I'm sure that. How you have learned to learn, learn to like ads and look forward to them. <laughs> we learn to ignore them. What else? Okay. I have a controversial opinion of my own, which is what I'm really looking forward to this year is to see how AI and advertising 
impacts two big elections. Oh yes. India and the US. Yeah. Because 2016 was Facebook's fault. In 2020 was Twitter's fault in opposing directions in the United States. And of course the last two or three Indian elections um have proven that politicians can be media and technology savant. Yeah. They really like play the game right. Uh, regardless of the rhetoric and the message and the polarized nature of our, our political opinions today i'm wondering what that will be because ai is obviously now changed the game so we're going to have deep fakes we're going to have new campaigns twitter is now something else facebook is kind of dead in the water we have new age platforms that are all looking at live commerce what is this going to do for possibly the two most important elections in the next decade i genuinely think these are the two elections that will be very important for the next 10 years and possibly forever because the next 10 years are when we must solve some critical issues like climate change so this for me is the application of our industry that i am very curious to sort of yeah is there anything that we can do about it like as regular human beings because now i noticed on twitter vote. and stuff vote yes for so those who don't like that's where you start <laughs> be yeah fakes. yeah yeah so i saw on twitter that you know there is a notice that comes in that says that this picture has been digitally altered oh okay so i mean i i can imagine that and and it gives you a link to the original picture as well this was about these people standing on lettuce have you seen it this is the newest thing oh my god they're standing on lettuce and the same lettuce is apparently used in whichever burger space that they are uh, at anyway so yes so ai in elections a big deal but you know historically every single leading political party has used the flavor of the day from mtv from bill clinton's time right down to facebook and meta through to uh, trump's time right so um india i think will do something uh legendary I don't want to sit back and wait for it but I like you said start by voting right. That's definitely very very sound and sage advice. The other thing I would like to look like I like to see some change on and this is something that we spoke about uh ad nauseum. It's not a point in time but it's a period of time of change. So in CTV and linear there's definitely going to be a bridge that needs to be built, a journey that needs to be had. uh you know the industry that needs to come together to find a common metric or a way to buy or because way with the way to measure and the way to do a post evaluation is i think pretty much sorted because you know you have data to prove it but how do you choose how do you buy where do you place your bets and how do you train teach and scale that method is something where i think we've started in some way but we need to progress and make a lot more uh, you know a lot more progress because I feel like devices in in terms of CTV will start to multiply faster than people are spending appropriately on advertising it's already there I mean that trend is already there but you know it'll start the gap will start widening if we don't make up our minds fast and that really requires collaboration and collaboration with competitors and between competitors and and between industry rivals to arrive at something where they are protecting a common pot so yeah so that's something that I that I'm looking forward to with CTV um the other thing i'm looking forward to is um e-commerce finding its space right it's always been like what on the funnel advertising uh people like driving only transactions and stuff like that and you have said that you're looking at sponsored posts below the posts that you've been shown um and anil the other day was talking about how he believes that we need to have an ad wallet right He has believed it for some time. He's believed yeah. it for some time. He's trying to pitch this to us many, many times, and I don't know whether we'll do it or somebody else will do it. But I'm just like trying to find whether anybody else is talking about this. But Cred is doing it in some way. When we talk about an ad wallet, is and I, and I don't know whether you do. Do you save some of the posts on on Instagram for yourself under save? Tons. Yeah, and then do you like categorize them into yeah? So so these kind of things we are doing on different platforms. Like we are doing stuff on Pinterest. We are doing stuff on on Instagram. But I. I very rarely come back to it unless I'm shopping for somebody or it's the season to shop or I want to buy something so I've gone back to that that uh, that list but if there was some way for me to for that to be able to remind me that I wanted to buy something or for that to be used as information by 
somebody, a brand that I like and I've given permission to sort of read this so that they can give me more options, etc. That ad wallet would be phenomenal because then it would be something that I'm giving permission for people to actually sell to me. It's like walking into a store and when a salesperson says, how can I help you, ma'am? And you say, I'm looking for X, Y, Z. That salesperson pretty much travels with me for the entire journey of my internet experience. I mean, I know I'm just being like, very, I'm like, this is like a major fantasy right now. But I, I, I don't think so. I think it's, it's interesting if that happens. It's an happens. interesting, yeah. Yeah. Because so, so we all do it in our own like crude yeah. and rudimentary Correct. fashion. Yeah, we are all trying to solve it in our own little, little ways. But I wish there was like a, a bigger solution. Like if I see an ad that I like now, I like, either I save it or I quickly like send it to somebody. Correct. So it's in my history, Correct. my conversation with that person. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And the other thing is that just like the duopoly that we have, uh, we will soon have large e-commerce marketplaces that will pretty much be like wholesale markets, right? Where you can go and stock. And then from there, you start uh, you start sort of uh, retailing from there. The Costco of e-commerce. Exactly. Yeah. And today you have influencers who are setting up stores of, of different types where you can go and attribute yourself uh, to that sale. And I follow these influencers because I believe in these influencers or I like them or like their style or whatever else. Which is almost like my salesperson, but not quite. It's not as transactional. It's more, it's, I mean, an influencer at the end. It's like, a, it's like a speaking magazine, right? So these kinds of things that are going to be in the e-commerce space are interesting because it makes, it makes life a lot more interesting online. Because offline store visits, uh, going to a store now has become very boring. There's nothing really in a store. I mean, it's, I remember I used to be so excited to go to like, you know, a, a multi-brand outlet a Macy's or a shopper stop or something of that sort. You can, if you, if you, when you talk about, it, I can still, I can still think back to that expensive perfume smell that's in the and that air conditioning at the right temperature and things like that. That doesn't really, that's not really cutting it anymore. I, I agree with you. I think e-commerce is coming of age. Yeah. Um, it's a fun time, as always. So did you uh, see the Netflix? Uh... <laughs> I did. I so. I saw what you had put up on our Slack channel yesterday yeah. and, I, and then I went around digging for it because yeah. I heard some murmurs about Netflix but I didn't pay attention. And then I went down that rabbit hole. I also downloaded a spreadsheet. Ta -ta -ta -da! <laughs> Even I. So Ted I was on the road. spreadsheet. Yeah. 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 So I was on the road and this came out and I saw the PR. I saw some tweet about it and I went to their, to, to Netflix's uh, uh, link and I saw that they say uh, they you know they spoke about how they they're committed to like releasing these views and all of that jazz and then download here, and I genuinely believe it's going to be I don't know I don't know what I thought it, maybe it was a video maybe it was maybe it was this experiential thing and you know I downloaded an Excel sheet it said dot xlsx and I was like what I thought it was so I literally like checked twice thinking maybe I've downloaded the wrong thing and it had an Excel sheet and a PNG banner on top right as in like you know dot png banner on top it's that like it was i was like okay okay this does the job i mean it's not like i mean i can picture a conversation <laughs> internally where a product manager must have been asked if they can make a dashboard and they would have said no or yeah. they would have said yes in 2027 yeah <laughs> you're so like, like just it. get it just Squirt. give me a sheet let's make it done I love it. I just love it because it just drags everybody back to first principles. Do you want the data? That's it. Should it be pretty? No. I just want the data. That's all. Here's the data. What do you think about the data? I read... Um, so first of all, I, I listened to... Finally, this is the first time I'm listening to The Town by, by Matthew <gasps> well, Belloni. His name Bellini. is Belloni like Bellini. 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 Yes. Um, and of course, I like the sort of dig he took at Ted Sarandos because he's just like, this is you flexing your... Like telling... Other studios that if you want scale, this is where to find it. Is this and a cynical take that he says? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, yes, it is cynical. Yeah. Before this point. Uh, but I also, I read um, the latest Stratechery uh, edition where he breaks this down. Okay. Um, where he said, if I may get past everyone's excitement about the fact that this is transparent and has been shared. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but the data set is quite crappy. There's not much you can do with it. Yeah. But the one thing he did do uh, ben Thompson is he plotted it to basically prove that there is a massive power law equation. Um, very few titles command most of the hours watched. Well, this is the Pareto that we've always spoken about, right? Yeah. And he was trying to get into why that could be. Is it 
quality of the content? Is it the recommendation engine? Is it just that when you cloud distribution, that's what happens? Is it preferential attachment? But he basically said, well, that's all I can deduce from this data set. But it's definitely a signal. Yeah. It's a signal to other studios that in the future, if we are going to syndicate more content, then this is the place to be. And if you're even thinking about competition, like, look at our numbers. Yeah. Look at our numbers. Ted, in his, uh, in this podcast uh, uh, with Matthew Bellini and, and Luke Shaw, right? Uh, they, he basically said, look, it, obviously there are a lot of those cynical aspects. It is in their best interest to release their hours view. Now, why they didn't do it in the past? Because, you know, they would actually... They were going away from weekend and box office releases uh, for yeah. any any show that was released. I would search because of their subscription and they didn't need to. Uh, yeah, and also this, he had a very like a different take on it. He said, you know, actors would actually uh, lose jobs if you had like something that was not performing as well on the day or two days or ten days after its release and and so on and so forth or whatever the window of uh, of calculation was. Uh, the other thing that he did, did say, which I said, oh, yes, like we're not thinking about this as, you know, from a Netflix perspective. We're just thinking about this from a very socialist way. Like everybody deserves to have all the information. Yeah. They are a business. They don't have to share all this competitive information. They don't even release how many subscribers they have in every job review, which is fine, right? Because they need to play some cards close I to I completely, their completely agree. Which is what I didn't think of. I was like, oh, what is this data? It's only hours viewed. Like where's the engagement metrics and, you know. And one of my friends who's a producer, who's a producer on Archie's, by the way, um, said, hey, but this data doesn't give you stuff like, you know, the emotional index or anything else that, you know, people usually look at in, in while while deducing shows. And I was like, yeah. And I was also very, like, up in arms about this data. When I heard Ted talk about, hey, this is like competitive information. Why would I put it out there? It it gives gives you pause, right? Saying that they're at least doing this. And the other thing is that once you start, now, this is the base. You only have to get better from here. And so, for, I'm sure as we go along and other companies also uh, kind of uh, get on board, you know, we'll see better and better data. Yeah, but so for people who are looking for the Netflix engagement report, I'm sure that we'll link it in the show notes as well. Have a go at it and tell us what you think and did you watch anything else? I know that I tried to scroll down to see whether there were any Indian titles. I didn't see any, but... Uh, did you see any Indian titles? No. No, I didn't. A lot of Korean. Though. Okay, then. That brings us to the end of episode 10. ten. Season 5. Season 5. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Santosh. And thank you, Anand. Thank you, everybody else. Bye. Bye.